So thanks everyone for joining um, and good afternoon or good morning if you're west of California as, as I am. As Maria mentioned, we'll have three sessions and in the first one, I'm going to introduce a background to tsunamis, uh, give a few of the lessons we learned from the Tahoku tsunami and then start the introduction of the ASE 716 new chapter 6 on tsunami loads and effects. So as to background, um, I, I had a question the other day from a, a reporter for ENR um, wanting to write an article on this new code asking how we could develop a, a full chapter of the code in three and a half years um, and, and get it adopted. And the fact is it, it didn't start three and a half years ago. This has been a long process of developing tsunami design in the US um, and it started way back in 1980 when Honolulu City and County uh, hired Dames and Moore to put together uh, fairly rudimentary tsunami design guidelines, which have been in the Honolulu City and County Code ever since. Uh, that's the only county in the country that designed for tsunamis. On the bottom of this timeline, I'm showing some of the damaging tsunamis uh, that prompted further action. And Washington State was the first to put together a workshop in 2001, which led to a research project by Harry Ye, myself, and Jane Prius to look at the feasibility of designing buildings for uh, So this was my first involvement with tsunamis. Um, I then put together a group here at the University of Hawaii, Oregon State University, and uh, put in a proposal to the NSF program to develop performance-based tsunami engineering. That went in in February 2004 and was not funded. Uh, ATC, however, picked up on that earlier report and started working on what is now FEMA P646. Um, the Indian Ocean tsunami happened in December of 2004, uh, so we revised our proposal, we submitted to NSF, and it was then funded. It's unfortunate that often it takes that kind of disaster before attention turns to these topics. Nevertheless, that project produced a lot of valuable information. Uh, in the meantime, I had been working with Harry Ye and others on the P646 document, which came out first edition in 2008. This deals with the design of vertical evacuation structures for tsunamis. Um, other tsunamis, Samoa, Chile, uh, came in quick succession, quite damaging events. Um, a colleague of mine, Ron Riggs, uh, got another project through NSF to look at debris impact issues. Um, the ASCE-7, well, I should back up a little bit. Gary Chock, a structural engineer here in Hawaii, was involved in the first of these Nice R or NSF projects. And by the end of that project, felt that we had enough information that we could put together a decent tsunami design code for uh, the US. Um, and so we worked at the end of 2010 to put together a committee of 30 people as a subcommittee to ASCE-7. And we managed to persuade ASCE-7 to fund that subcommittee in February of 2011, which was very fortuitous. Uh, because the Tohoku tsunami happened the next month, and so we were able to go and visit that event. Uh, in the meantime, IBC 2012 brought in FEMA P646 as a reference document. So ASCE 7 is not the first standard, it's the first comprehensive standard, but FEMA P646 was the precursor to this code. Uh, after Tohoku, we realized things needed to be improved in FEMA P646, so we updated a second edition, um, and we completed our draft of the ASC 7 Chapter 6 in June 2014. Two, three and a half years of work, uh, more tsunamis just to keep us on our toes. And finally, uh, we got it through ASCE approval in uh, June of 2015. So it will appear, that's where we are now, it will appear in the ASCE 716 as Chapter 6, which will be published early next year. Um, I'm working on a design manual for ASCE to try to explain how to provide these provisions. How to, how to, it should have been published already, but it's taking me longer than I'd planned. And IBC has preliminarily adopted, or at least the Structures Committee of IBC, ICC, let me say, has approved the inclusion of this Chapter 6 in IBC 2018, which means that the states will be able to adopt it in 2020 or thereabouts. So it's taken a long time, but um, fairly rapid for code adoption in the US. So the subcommittee is made up, as I mentioned, of uh, 16 full members, 14 associate members, under the very able leadership of Gary Chuck. Uh, those of you who know him will understand that. 
Uh, it consists of 42 pages of code and 60 pages of commentary. It took us a lot of effort to put it together and a lot of effort to get it through the ASCE 7 main committee.